Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Tester Certification. As a part of this, we are still in Chapter 2, that is Standards of ENE System. And we are looking into the next topic, that is 2.2 ISO 26262. And in this, we are still getting uh, with the subcomponents of the same, where today we will be covering about 2.2.4, the influence of the criticality on the extent of the test. Now, as a part of this segment, we generally want to understand that how exactly different criticality of the subject matter can be affected on the test cases and how exactly it is important to make sure that if these uh, additional test steps which are being created in order to assist these critical areas or the risk areas which happens as a part of automotive industry. So yes, it's pretty important for a tester to understand that how exactly the criticality of a particular activity influence the extent of the test and required test effort. So the very first section we are talking about is the criticality levels of ASIL, where ASIL is another thing or concept or a subject matter in terms of determining automotive safety integrity level. Okay, so what is ASIL? ASIL is a measure for the required risk reduction by measures of the functional safety. Such measures can, for example, be an independent safety function for the supervision of an e, &E system or the implementation of spe specifically defined methods. For higher level of risk, more elaborate measures can be necessary. So I think uh, ASIL is just another set of instructions or protocol which generally determines that how much critical a particular activity is and this will measure and tell you that how much effort will be required in order to overcome that criticality. At the beginning of the project, an expert team carries out the hazard analysis and the risk assessment for the product. For each risk identified by this analysis, he or she determines an ISIL with the help of one of the methodologies defined in the standard. In the next steps, he drafts safety goals and safety requirements. These use the same ASIL as the risk they are based on. So ASIL, you know, there are a lot of other things in detail, like we do have different uh, levels of ASIL, A, B, C, D. I'm just having a link, link in the description, which will lead you to understand a little more about ASIL. So if you're interested, you can definitely explore. Uh, the same can be found in the description. You can refer to that link and uh, look at more details about ASIL. See, as per the ISO 26262, uh, it defines four levels of ASIL, starting from ASIL A, which is uh, being the lowest, uh, up to ASIL D for high safety requirements. If the hazard analysis and risk assessment uh, leads to requirements below ASIL A in terms of the standard, those are not safety relevant. And these requirements will be covered by complying with the existing quality management which you generally have in your process. The second part of this topic is to talk about the influence of ACL on the test techniques, test types, and the extent of the test. So putting it all together, if you talk about like how exactly the safety constraints can be uh, determining what techniques can be usable and what types of tests should be conducted. So determination of ACL influences directly the extent of the test to be implemented by the tester. Depending on one of the particular level of ASIL, like A, B, C, D, the ISO 26262 standard uh, recommends the execution of the different measures or packages of the measures. ISO 26262 specifies three levels of recommendation. Number one, no recommendation. Number two, recommended and highly recommended. So what are these levels? For no recommendation, the standard does not provide any recommendation for or against the use of the corresponding measure. It can be used as a support without any concern. And similarly, when it says it's recommended, we generally go for something it should be done, generally, and highly recommended this. It generally says that it is the, the only option which you can try with. So when you say highly recommended, it's completely, uh, that's only the one option which you have. You do not have any other choices to do. For the tester, this means that the standard recommends a specific test design techniques, test types for the functional safety relevant systems depending on the ACL standard or level. The tester can only decide independently within the framework of the standard regarding this special case. For example, use of equivalence partitioning and boundary value analysis are recommended for ACL A 
on the other hand for SLB or higher those techniques are highly recommended so I think you know this is how we try to see the impact of the uh, influence from the point of criticality depending on the ACL levels on the test types and the test techniques the ACL is not a characteristics of the entire product it is connected to a specific safety objective and the feature re, the resulting safety requirements therefore there can be significantly different test efforts for safety requirements with different ACLs for one product so don't just keep it under the impression that the ACL is a evaluation or measurement of the overall application's quality characteristic. No, it's, it's, it's basically a kind of, uh, you know, measurement for different components, different type of activities, different uh, requirements. So you just measure that how effective it is and you try to measure the same thing. So that's more important to be taken care and understood about the same. So don't forget you have a link in the description to know more about your ASL, right? Automotive safety uh, integrity level. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. This chapter is going to be pretty long, so we will be talking about all of these in short and simple videos. So stay tuned for that. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.